Hey everyone, it's James here from the Dev Genie Academy, and in this episode, we're going to be looking to add ambient light to our scene. So without further ado, let's begin. So first of all, in our entities package, we need to create a new class called material. And in this material, it's going to store all of the attributes that we need for lighting. So first of all, we need a private vector 4F for the ambient color. We need a diffuse color, and we also need a specular color. Let's just import that. There we go. So next up, we also need a private float for the reflectance. That's it. And then we also need a private texture texture. And in constructor, we need all the values in there, of course. But we can also make a few other constructors as well. So let's make a public material, which is empty. And instead of creating four empty vector four Fs, let's go to our constants class. And in here, let's create a static vector 4f which is just default to zero so that's going to be a public static final vector 4f and that's going to be called default color and that's going to equal a new vector 4f of 1.0f 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 and 1.0f so back in the material class we can then say this dot ambient color equals consts dot default color we could do that two more times, changing ambient for diffused color and for specular color. And then we can just say this dot texture equals null and this dot reflectance equals zero. Now that the empty constructor is complete, let's create another constructor. And in this one, we'll do a material with a vector 4f of color and a float of reflectance. So this time we can then just call the this command, which passes the color three times. The reflectance and then null for the texture. Um, we can also do another material which takes in a texture and this is going to be again just default color so consts not default color. Do that two more times the reflectance will be zero and we pass in the texture. Okay there we go. So let's create one more material let's just use the vector for color and reflectance and let's just add a texture to the end of that one. And then instead of null, we just pass the texture through. I think that's enough constructors for now. So all we'll need to do now is just some getters and setters for everything, basically. And we can then do a boolean has texture. So that this returns if the texture doesn't equal null. And we can close that material class. So in our model class, like we did last time with the texture, we need to change this texture now to a material and everywhere we've got references of texture we need to change to material and then we can say this dot material equals material and in the next constructor we change the this dot material to be equal to this dot model dot get material but this before we can do that we need a getter and setter for the material so it's just model dot get material after that and we can then do this dot material dot set texture can then equal to texture. And we also in the first constructor need to do something similar because I've messed up a little bit. It needs to be this dot material equals a new material. We need to keep texture in the constructor and pass the texture through. And in the main constructor we do then do this dot material equals a new material. So the final errors that we're getting of get texture, we need to do material dot get texture and the set texture we need to do material dot set texture we also need another public void set texture function but along with the texture we also need to pass in a float of the reflectance as well there we go and then we can say this dot material dot set texture to be texture and this dot material dot set reflectance to be reflectance so now we can close the model class down and we can go into the object loader in the create obj model function at the very bottom where we'll be doing load model we now have the ability to add the normals array into that so after texture coordinates array add normal array to it go into the load model function and after the float of texture coords add a new float of normals and copy the store data and attribute list line and make that attribute number two and the vertex count of three make sure to change the texture coordinates at the end to normals after we've done that, we can then close the object loader class and in the shader manager, 
In here, we need to create a new function, and we're going to call this public void create material uniform. And in there, we need to pass in a string of uniform name, and of course, we need to throw an exception to. So from there, we can then just call the create uniform function, pass in the uniform name, and append a string of ambient at the end. Copy this line four more times, and we can then call a diffuse. So ambient diffuse specular, if I can spell it correctly, there we go. We then also need to pass in a has texture. And finally, we need to pass in the reflectance as well. So we can copy those lo those lines there for the create. And in the set uniforms, we need to create a public void set uniforms. This passes in the string of uniform name and then a material as the second parameter. Copy those create uniforms, but change the create uniform to set uniform. There we go. And we need to change that uniform to uniform name. And at the end of the ambient light, we then do material.get ambient color, material.get diffuse color, material.get specular color. And then this way we can do material.get material.has texture question mark one and zero because we need to cast that value to an integer. And finally we need to do material.get reflectant. We can now close that shader manager. So now in the render manager, we can then call shader.create uniform of ambient light and then shader.create material uniform of material. In the render function, we can then call shader.set uniform and the uniform name needs to be material and then we need to do entity.getmodel.get material and then we need to do shader.set uniform one more time but then we have ambient light as the uniform name. But before we go any further, go back into the constants class and then we can create a public static final vector 3f for the ambient color or ambient light, it'll probably be better. It's a new vector 3f and I want to call this 0.3f, 0.3f, 0.3f. I may need to amend that later on, but that'll be a good starting point. And then we just pass const.ambientLight. And then in the enable vertex attribute array, we need to enable attribute 2. And that means we also need to disable it as well. We can now close the render manager and the constants class. In the window manager, let's re-enable those cool face and cool back. And in the test game, where we've got the model.set texture, we need to now change, we need to now add a parameter on the end of it. So it's now model.set texture of a new texture of blue, but one F at the end. And in the update method, I'm just going to decrease the rotation by half, so it's 0 0.25. In the render, we'd no longer need that window.set clear color anymore because in the render we've got a clear method there as well, anyway. Back in the vertex shader, we need to pass in that vector 3 uh, of normal. We also need to pass out a vector 3 of frag normal and also pass out a vector 3 of frag pos. So in main, we can now do a create a vector 4 of world pos and this then just equals the transformation matrix and the vector 4 position and we can copy that in there and then we can just add the world pos to the end of the gl position. This then means that we can do frag normal equals normal lies world pos dot x y z and we can then do frag pos equals world pos dot x y z and that's everything done in the vertex shader so now we need to move our attention towards the fragment shader and now we need to take in those vector threes of the frag normal and also the frag pos there we go and out is still the frag color but we also need now to make a, a struct which is going to be material and inside of that structure we need to then do a vector 4 of ambient a vector 4 of diffuse a vector 4 of specular an integer of has texture and a float of reflectance so that's the same values as what we put in to that create un material uniform function earlier on we also need to create a uniform of vector 3 of ambient light and then also that uniform of the material as well so that's uniform material and then material and it's going to have all of those values in it.
So before we do the main, we need to create a few more local variables. That's going to be a vector 4 of ambient C, a vector 4 of diffuse C, and a vector 4 of specular C. So inside of the, just before the main function, let's create another function in here called void setup colors. That's going to pass in a material of material and also a vector 2 of texture quads. And inside of the function, we can then say if material has a texture, and if that equals 1, we can then say ambient C equals texture of texture sampler and texture quads. And then we can just do diffuse equals ambient C and specular, sorry, specular C equals ambient C. However, if there isn't a texture, then that means now we need to do ambient C equals material dot ambient diffuse c equals material dot diffuse and specular c equals material dot specular and in the main function we can then just call that function which is set up colors we pass in the material and we pass in the frag text quads so that means now the frag color just needs to equal ambient c and that needs to multiply by the vector 4 of ambient light and 1 now we should be in a position where we can run this successfully, however on some machines that may not work. So if that happens to you, if you go back into the fragment shader and remove the diffuse C and the specular C, also remove the function as well. And in the main function itself, add the material dot has texture line and then just make it ambient C equals texture of texture sampler and frag texture coordinate. The else parameter is the important bit here where you can just do ambient C equals material.ambient plus material.specular plus material.diffuse. The reason why there's an issue here is that the GLSL is complaining that the material of ambient, specular and diffuse are not being used. But in frag color, again, just do the same thing as before, ambient C multiplied by vector 4 of ambient light and 1, and then also add in the ambient C plus material.reflectance. Using it this way for now, regardless, should allow you to run the application and successfully have ambient light. We'll review that later on when we add the remaining lighting sources, and then this won't be a problem anymore. So I need to go back into my constants to increase that ambient light. I'm just going to increase it to 1.3, 1.3 and 1.3, just so it's obvious on the recording that there is ambient light now in present. You can see that the ambient light's there, and also inside of the model, we are now culling the back phase. So thanks very much for watching everyone. Next week we'll be looking at directional light, but as always, if you do have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Thank you.